Are you wondering how good game viewing is around Lower Sabi and the Kruger National Park? By the end of this video you'll know which roads around camp are best and what animals you can expect to see on them. Hi, I'm Philia Stain and I'm the Safari Expert and this is the first video in a series about all the game viewing areas around the rest camps of the Kruger National Park. Check out the others in the Kruger Game Viewing Playlist and if you want to learn more about Lower Sabi itself, go and check out the video I made about this popular rest camp as well. I'll link to it in the description below and also at the end of this video. Before I tell you what you can expect to see around Lower Sabi, make sure to subscribe to my channel and also click the little bell if you want to be notified every time I post a new safari related video. Also check out the description for any important links and information like the South African National Parks bookings link as well as a must have book for any visit to the Kruger National Park called Kruger Self Drive Routes, Roads and Ratings which you can order online. Lower Sabi is located at the southeastern tip of South Africa's Kruger National Park and the area around it is arguably the best for game viewing in the entire reserve. That's a bold statement if you consider that Kruger is the size of a small country. The reason for this is because Lower Sabi lies in an area with a very high habitat diversity. It's one of the few places in the park where a number of different eco-zones as they are known come together. North and southeast of camp you have open savannas that are ideal for plains game like zebras, wildebeest and cape buffalo and also for cheetahs that prefer hunting in clearings. Southwest of camp lies a dense thicket of Delahua thorn thickets that are preferred by browsers like kudus and even though I've never seen them here it looks like the perfect habitat for black rhinos. Further west it opens up a little bit where mixed woodlands attract a large variety of game and if you want to see elephants and leopards there are few better places than the more than 30 kilometers of Sabi riverfront northwest of camp. The dense riverine forest here also attracts vervet monkeys, baboons and bushbuck. What about lions I hear you ask? Well to be honest all the roads around Lower Sabi are great for lions. Probably because there's such a high density of prey animals that they can feast on here. Before I recommend two routes to drive from Lower Sabi remember to check out the video on my top 10 game viewing tips in Kruger. I'll link to it in the description below and at the end of the video. Right, you're staying at Lower Sabi and you want to know which specific routes to drive. My favorite route early in the morning is to drive very slowly along the H41 Sabi River Road. There are two reasons for driving this road early in the morning. Firstly, this is the best time to spot leopards which love this area. And secondly, because you're driving northwest, you won't have to look straight into the rising sun which can be very irritating and make game viewing difficult. Make sure to carefully scan the rocks on either side of the road at Lubi Lubi about 4 kilometers from camp. You can either park on a small bridge that gives you a great view over the rocks or on a little gravel loop that overlooks the most prominent rock. This is where lions and leopards sometimes bask in the early morning sun and I've also seen clip springers here as well. Don't be in a rush along the Sabi River. Carefully scan the undergrowth and each and every big tree you pass for leopards which can easily be overlooked if you drive too fast. Chances are that you'll spot a lot of other things as well simply because you're driving slowly and searching so carefully. Also scan the sandy banks of the river for lions who love sunbathing and drinking there early in the mornings. You'll be unlucky not to see elephants along the H41 that are attracted here not only by the water but also by an abundance of food. And you should at least see one big troop of baboons and vervet monkeys walking in the road as well. It's always worthwhile spending a little bit of time with them, watching the adults groom themselves and each other for ticks and enjoying the antics of the little ones who always seem to be playing. And please resist the temptation to feed them because they will jump into your car if they see food. If you're lucky you might bump into wild dogs on the H41. I've seen them on numerous occasions in the vicinity of the Nwatamiri Causeway and the split with the S21. Another reason I like driving this route in the morning is because there's a lovely picnic site called Nkuhlu situated about 23 kilometers from camp which at least gives you a chance to stretch your legs and use the restroom. After another 14 kilometers turn right onto the H12 and take a very slow drive over the high water bridge over the Sabi river because you never know what you might spot down below. There could be hippos, crocs and monitor lizards in the water or bushbuck and nyala feeding in the thickets. I've even seen a very rare bird, the African finfoot, here before. 
Also remember to double check the gigantic sycamore fig branches for lazy leopards. Turn right again onto the S30 Salici road immediately after you've crossed the bridge and start making your way back to camp. I've seen leopards and lion here before and there's a large open plain about halfway down the road where I've seen cheetah on multiple occasions. By the time you get to the high water bridge over the Sabi River just east of Lower Sabi Rest Camp, it'll probably be nice and hot already. This is one of my favorite spots to park off and take a break for a while. Spend some time searching for crocodiles along the base of the reed beds and for hippos enjoying the faster flowing water at the southern tip of the bridge. This is also a great area to look for impressive goliath herons and busy little hummerkop fishing in the rapids. I like driving south of camp in the afternoons. If you want to go for a long drive, go all the way to Crocodile Bridge Rest Camp along the tar road and then make your way back along the S28 gravel road. And if you only want to go for a short drive, also take the tar road but then turn off onto the S130 and S137 past Duke Waterhole and back along the S28. The reason I start on the tar is so that I can drive the highly productive S28 gravel road late in the afternoon when animals are most active and the light is at its best. If you ask me, this is one of the best three roads in the whole park for cheetah. So carefully scan all the large open areas and make double sure to check any little rise which they often use to get a better view over the tall grass. Speaking of which, in the wet season from December to March, this is a great place to look for massive flocks of red-billed quileas that come here to feed on the grass seeds. And it's definitely one of the most impressive spectacles I've ever witnessed in Kruger. Always remember to leave yourself enough time to get back to camp before the gates close without having to race there. Not only is there a chance of running over birds and animals trying to cross the road, but you may even be pulled over for speeding by park officials, which will result in a hefty fine. In fact, I always try and leave myself at least 20 minutes to go and park at Sunset Dam just northwest of camp to watch the sunset. And because it's literally a minute's drive from camp, it means you never have to rush back. You can actually park off here any time of the day and chances are that you'll see something awesome. There's the resident Nile crocodiles basking in the sun and hippos giving lifts to surfing grey herons, as well as a long list of other birds looking for something to eat on the shoreline or trying to catch fish in the shallows. And you never know, you might just see some big game come down to drink as well. If I stay at Lower Sabi for a few nights, I obviously also explore the area north of camp as well. I typically drive along the H10 tar road all the way to Nkumbi viewpoint where you're allowed to get out of your vehicle and walk to a small thatched lookout area high up on the ridge. From here you can see for miles and miles and you don't want to forget your binoculars on this day. After enjoying the view at Nkumbi, I usually drive the same route back to camp. It's very open and a great place to spot lions as well as large herds of Cape Buffalo that sometimes gather here in herds of 500 or more. I can highly recommend the book Kruger Self Drive Routes, Roads and Ratings, which not only contain its own route suggestions, but also goes into detail about what you can expect to see on each and every road in the park. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to order it online. I really hope you found this video helpful in planning your next trip to Kruger. If that was the case, please give it a thumbs up below. Please also consider subscribing to my channel and check out the videos on where to find animals in Kruger and Lower Sabi Rest Camp itself. And don't forget to check out those playlists about the rest camps of Kruger and the game viewing areas around them for more similar videos.